Thank you very much for this kind introduction. Astrophysical research indicates that the Milky Way with our solar system must have an age of about 4,000 million years. Life on our planet Earth must have started with primitive microorganisms about 3,500 million years ago. But it remains unknown how they originate. In the course of time, stepwise evolution then gave rise to a multitude of different microorganisms and then also to various multicellular living organisms, including plants and animals. This stepwise evolutionary progress resulted in today's high biodiversity on our planet Earth by a remarkable process of permanent creation. I will report here on results and implications that have recently become revealed by intensive research. Bacteria have served as excellent testing ground to uncover mechanisms of evolution because of their fast replication times as we will illustrate with some examples. In general, biological activities are guided by genetic information carried in the genome. In E. coli bacteria, the genome is generally a circular, double-stranded DNA molecule. Its genetic information resides in the specific sequence of the four nucleotides, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. In comparison with our written language, the size of the bacterial genome corresponds to the size of a book. Some bacteria carry also so-called plasmids, small DNA molecules of the size of one page. This is in general also the size of bacterial viruses, which we call phages. Single steps of microbial evolution require usually appropriate genetic variants in the genome, variations in the genome. A number of specific mutational mechanisms can fulfill this request. So far, we studied mechanisms of genetic variation. Can they can be they studied mechanisms of genetic variation can be grouped into three strategies. The first of these strategies are point mutants with an alteration of one or a few adjacent nucleotides. They can result upon DNA replication at a site of a short-living photomeric nucleotide. Tautomeric adenine pairs upon DNA replication with cytosine instead of thymine, and tautomeric guanine pairs with thymine instead of cytosine. A point mutation thereby results in this kind of replication error if this error uh, escapes a repair process shortly after its production. The second strategy of genetic variation is unknown. We 
know that uh, bacteria carry at some sites so-called mobile genetic elements. Occasionally, such an element can excise from its location and then integrate at another site in the genome. The process is called transposition, and it can sometimes produce a new functional fusion acting as genetic variant. Now I come to the third strategy. This is to equip the bacteria cell with a nor nor novel, novel genetic capacity, which we call horizontal, also called lateral gene transfer. This process can involve evolve conjugation, transduction, or transformation. The thereby taken up foreign DNA segments can be properly read by the recipient cell thanks to the universal genetic code. Many bacterial strains are genetically equipped with a restriction modification system. They can verify the origin of taken up DNA molecules. Their own DNA is marked by methylation at each strain-specific sequence of a few nucleotides. This is done by the modification enzyme. The restriction enzyme can identify on the taken up DNA the same nucleotide sequences that are not methylated. These non-methylated nucleotides then give rise to cut the taken up DNA into fragments, which are then acid solubilized by the cellular exonuclease, unless they have been protected from destruction by a fast integration into the genome of the recipient cell. The intestinal E. coli bacteria serving for these experiments are propagated in the laboratory in appropriate growth medium at 37 degrees Celsius. Their generation time then is about 30 minutes. During the intensive growth, they can occasionally produce a point mutant at any possible base pair. Also, occasionally, one of the mobile genetic elements can transpose to another site in the genome. In the bacterial cells, if, sorry, if the bacterial cells propagate in a mixture of other with other bacterial strains, as it is usually the case upon growth in a microbiome, it occasionally can happen that events of horizontal gene transfer occur by conjugation or by transduction. The three strategies of forming various genetic variants are relatively rare. Some of the produced mutants may enable the cells to grow also in an alternative growth medium in which the original bacteria are unable to propagate. The here described processes of genetic adaptation occur by the involved bacteria by what we 
call self-organization. With this term of self-organization, we mean that the genome has the ability to reorganize by itself. But it does so at a rather low frequency in order to maintain most cells genetically stable, thereby no long no no taking risks that would be too big for on for the evolutionary progress. Another relevant conclusion is the fact that a creation is a permanent process in view of the steady evolution of the living organisms in their also evolving living condition. I am convinced that these conclusions are generally valid for living organisms. Indeed, horizontal gene transfer is not limited to microorganisms. It can also occur by eukaryotic organisms as shown by systematic nucleotide sequence analysis. Our human civilization still profits from the presence of a relatively rich biodiversity, enabling occasional horizontal gene transfer to other kinds of organisms. But today's worldwide life conditions implicate a steady loss of genetic information. A major reason for this bad situation resides in the increasing transformation of wild type habitats on our planet, also by an intensive use for agriculture, human habitations, and other purposes. We must be that up does not grow. Therefore, we're close to time, Werner. I'm almost finished. Therefore, the human population should reach. Uh, and to reach and then, maintain, and then maintain a relatively stable size compatible with the planetary limit. We have to be better aware that our human activities should take care of the remarkable richness of the planetary biodiversity. In view of the role played by a steady occurring of occasional gene transfer in the biological evolution of any kind of living organisms, it is our duty to preserve the worldwide richness of uh, all kinds of, of specific genes. We have to be aware that a long time further evolution on, of life is likely to depend intensively on the available genetic capacities. Advanced uh, methods well, of genetic hearing and enable if, us to if, if you could just uh, summarize please. for relevant use examples are the production of golden rice and of able to use yeah. either in conclusion the appreciated rich di diversity of living organisms on our planet not only goes back to common 
to a common origin, but also can profit from a common future by occasional horizontal gene transfer. Thank you. I'm sorry for the, having been a bit too long.